Hey, what's up gang? Kawhi 50 here with another fake grand order video and it's time to talk to you about one of the most anticipated sabers in the game, the saber of Heian Kyo. I am of course talking about Ibuki Doji. Some of you might be anticipating another certain saber in the future, but uh, we're talking about this one right now. We're going to be going over the best allies, craft essences, and command codes to make Ibuki Doji an incredible partner on your team and to get her prepared prepared for uh, some changes that are going to be coming to Fate Grand Order in the future. Hopefully this video ends up helping you out, and if it does, be sure to go ahead, like, and subscribe. Ibuki Doji comes equipped with one quick, one arts, and three buster cards with an AoE buster noble phantasm. That's right, we are back to the good old days of Unga Bunga with this saber. Kind of sort of seeming like a five star Gawain. Her max HP of 13,498 is all right, but what's really impressive is Ibuki Doji's attack. Sitting at 12,709, this is currently in the top 10 of attacks for all characters in the entire game. You're gonna be seeing Ibuki Doji putting out some numbers. Her NP per hit seems solid at first at a 0.78%, but considering she only has one arts card and one quick card, she's definitely going to need some help to charge that. NP in the form of craft essences or allies, but she's going to need a little bit of help even with her one insane skill. Her star absorption is sitting at a 98, which is pretty average, what we can expect from a Saber class servant, and it is actually in a decent enough place for us to boost it up in the event we want to go the buster crit route with her. Ibuki's first skill is Monstrous Strength, rank A+. This gives her an attack increase for three turns that only works three times, but is a 20 to 40% boost. What's even more incredible about this skill is the fact that it grants her an immediate 30 to 50% Noble Phantasm steroid. Because of that secondary bonus, we are going to want to go ahead and max this skill first to give Ibuki Doji a 50% NP charge as soon as possible and get her ready for the advent of Buster Farming on NA. Ibuki's second skill is Eightfold Wave Surge Rank B. This increases her Buster card effectiveness by 20 to 30% and grants her a 20 to 30% defense boost as a little bit of gravy. More importantly than that defense boost, we also get another 10 to 20 critical stars that Ibuki Doji is actually going to be able to make use of. Isn't that nice when skills generate things that we can actually use? We will go ahead and max this skill second, mainly so we can get that buster card effectiveness bonus, which Ibuki will need in her farming future. And Ibuki's final skill is Impure Fingertip Rank A. This seals a single enemy's Noble Phantasm, which can be very helpful in challenge quests, and also grants Ibuki a 30 to 50% critical strength boost. So, like I said previously, we can actually make use of a Buster Crit build on Ibuki Doji against bosses. She also gets to apply a special attack to herself against undead enemies. You're going to see another 30 to 50% damage on top of that. So if there's an undead challenge quest, you might really want to consider bringing Ibuki along. For Ibuki's append skill, I definitely want to recommend Load Magical Energy, which is good on pretty much anybody. The other two append skills aren't necessarily as much priority. That starting NP gauge is what we really want to gun for first and foremost. And now we get to Ibuki's Noble Phantasm, Shinken Kusanagi no Tachi. This Noble Phantasm ignores invincibility, and the ignore invincibility effect activates before damage is dealt, as it should. So this means that Ibuki is going to be able to plow through enemies with a Buster Brave Chain on follow-up. The damage she deals also completely ignores enemy defenses. This also has a pretty sick overcharge bonus, decreasing the Buster Resist of all enemies by another 20 to 40% for three turns, evoking images in me of Ibuki being essentially a Saber Karna in terms of mechanics, and we know how good Karna is still to this day, so that should honestly make you pretty dang excited. As with most Noble Phantasms, the 1 to 2 jump is generally the biggest boost, so NP2 should be more than fine if you're really looking to push forward and get multiple copies of Ibuki, but she will honestly be just fine with a single 
noble phantasm level. She's going to do okay. So which allies should we pair Ibuki Doji with? Well, she is a buster servant in every single way possible. So of course, we're going to want to go with our premier buster supports. Merlin is going to be your best go-to on NA at the time this video has released, so he can go ahead and grant her some effective buster bonuses, and you're mainly going to be using Ibuki Doji as a boss slayer at this point. You're going to get that buster resist down from that noble phantasm, and you're going to go to town on the enemy with your face cards. However, once we get Koyan Skaya of Light on NA, Ibuki is going to be a very serviceable and very powerful wave clearer. She is going to be able to farm up there with the best of them thanks to her incredibly powerful attack. But Ibuki in general is just strong with either of these supporters and has the capability to fill multiple roles, either being a boss slayer or being a wave clearer depending on the situation. And not many servants can say that. There are of course other supporters we can pair Ibuki Doji with and we're going to go over just a few of them right now. To start with, we can give her a one-star supporter in the form of Oda Nobukatsu. Now, Ibuki is unfortunately not a Nobu, so she won't benefit from everything Nobukatsu is able to provide. However, he can still provide her with quite a bit. He has a Buster Resist debuff for enemies that will stack with her own. He will grant her a critical strength boost and a few critical stars. And of course, he can restore some HP for her upon his own death, as well as granting a Blanket Buster card effectiveness boost. For those of you out there unfortunately lacking a Nobukatsu, you can still go ahead and give her Hans as a very strong supporter. The critical strength boost pairs nicely with her own, and he's also able to grant her critical stars every single turn, as well as some noble phantasm gauge every single turn, which is very nice considering she is a buster servant. Queen Himiko remains a stellar option for pretty much any Buster Servant, and the same can be said for Ibuki Doji, especially if you are running her as a boss slayer. Shrine Maiden's Charisma grants an attack boost as well as 8 critical stars each turn for all allies, including our Ibuki, so she's going to have a ton of critical stars with which she can play with. On top of that, Himiko's Noble Phantasm grants Buster Card effectiveness even more critical strength, and it will increase Ibuki Doji's Noble Phantasm Overcharge level. Her Noble Phantasm Overcharge is directly tied to her Buster Resistance debuff, so she's going to pull even more damage out of her Buster cards with Himiko on the team. And finally, partially to get you excited for a future Summer Servant, and partially because she actually works really well with Ibuki, I've also got to recommend Skahawk Scotty Ruler as an acceptable pairing for Ibuki Doji. Skahawk Scotty Ruler is able to provide a Buster Card Critical Strength Boost, some more Buster Card Effectiveness and Attack, as well as some Critical Stars, and she can increase Ibuki Doji's Buster Critical Star Gather Rate specifically while providing some extra Noble Phantasm Gauge and Critical Stars. If you're pulling Ibuki Doji and want another solid supporter to mess around with, consider saving up for this servant. So whichever craft essence we give Ibuki Doji is going to mainly depend on the situation we're using her in. If you're using her in a boss or enemy slayer style situation, big boys, we're talking the chimeras, we're talking the hydras, we're talking enemy servants, you're going to want to go ahead and give her some sort of buster card effectiveness and critical strength setup. That is what you're going to be going for most of the time after you've recently pulled her. Of course, I cannot talk about how good Starry Knights is enough. Buster card effectiveness, critical strength boost, and a starting noble phantasm gauge, great for every single buster crit servant, Ibuki Doji being no exception. I can also comfortably recommend First Sunrise for her. This doesn't grant the critical strength boost, but it does grant Buster Card effectiveness as well as a starting NP gauge. Now, you might find that you might be having trouble generating enough critical stars for Ibuki Doji to use them, so maybe you want to consider Ibuki Doji's critical star gather rate. You go ahead and you buff that up, well, you're going to find that she is a lot more consistent in using those critical stars. My recommendation for that is At Wish's End, which you should have received during the Heaven's Field premiere commemorative campaign. This grants a critical star gather rate boost as well as a buster card effectiveness boost. Overall, one of the most solid free craft essences FGO has received. 
Ultimately though, if you end up using Ibuki Doji for farming, one CE and one CE alone will continue to remain supreme on that front, and that is the Black Grail. The damage is just too good. And finally, we have command codes. Of course, we want to use our command codes to play into Ibuki Doji's strengths. We want Noble Phantasm damage. We want a few critical stars if possible. We want critical damage. Empress of the Hanging Gardens can be an excellent pick, granting NP damage up, as well as a couple critical stars. Da Vinci Chan is, of course, an excellent Noble Phantasm damage up command code. Again, with these Noble Phantasm damage up command codes, you have to use the card they're attached to before you use the Noble Phantasm but the trade-off for the damage always ends up being worth it. If you're looking to buff up Ibuki's other buster cards, consider something like Mistress of the Heavens, granting a solid critical damage boost to that buster card, or the Blades of Neaton Doraku, a lower rarity alternative. I can also, of course, recommend Majin San for any of her buster cards. This increases star absorption on that card specifically and increases the overall critical damage. Overall, everyone, I've really got to say Ibuki Doji is is an absolutely excellent saber. She is kind of what I wanted Gawain to be in a sense in the term of the raw power she is able to put out. She functions both effectively as a boss slaying servant as well as a farming servant once Koyan's Gaia of Light arrives. The fact that she is able to reduce enemies buster card resistance really helps her on the critical damage and boss slaying front and her massive massive attack is able to help her farm very very effectively. Ibuki Do Doji is just an excellent saber. There is no two ways around it, and you should be very excited if you ended up summoning her. She is a truly great, great servant. But of course, I want to know what you all think, so let me know your thoughts on Ibuki Doji down in the comment section below. Let me know if you think there are any allies, craft essences, or command codes that I might have missed, and let me know if there is any specific boss you found great joy in using Ibuki Doji to take down, be it on NA or on JP. I definitely want to know. Of course, if you want to talk more Fate Grand Order, my Discord server is available down in the link to this video below. I'd like to give a big thanks to patrons on Patreon, subscribers and followers on Twitch, and all of you here on YouTube. It is the support of all of you combined that makes me want to continue making these videos, and I truly, truly appreciate it in whatever form it arrives in. Anyways, gang, that's it for me, Kawaii50. I hope you all have a phenomenal day, and I will see you all in the next video.